scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you have done tonight. We declare that forever Jesus will be lifted in this place. Lord, more than a man, may your people see Jesus. May they see Christ lifted and glorified. Tonight, change our lives by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus. Please just sit down, everyone. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. This is not for everybody. There are specific people that this prophetic word is joy, 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 joy. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Mighty God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Just help those under the anointing. And um, let us get to the word. These are the various ways and systems in the kingdom by which God lifts men. More than the communications of men. This is a spirit communication. That God invades your spirit man and deposits something upon you. You see, God, just within these few minutes, has distributed so many things so many things activating gifts dimensions bringing people into realms and levels most times you may not understand what you have received until you step out of this place and then you will see possibilities activated and you will know that this one was by the finger of god hallelujah Second Peter chapter 1, let's get to the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is bringing restoration to someone among the ushers. I just saw this now in a flash. One of the ushers. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration by the Spirit. And God is saying it will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. 
in the name of Jesus Christ the name of Jesus Christ second Peter chapter 1 I don't know who this is for but the Lord is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word still stands what I told you must come to pass the way I said it the Lord is saying I should tell somebody my word still stands no matter what you have seen this is a prophetic word for someone and I speak by the Spirit God is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word my word still stands no matter what you have seen my word still stands i've spoken once i will not speak again my word still stands my word still stands forever O lord your word is settled forever O lord your word is settled please sit down i want you to be very sensitive to what god is doing this is not just people shouting carelessly or falling under the anointing no this is god birthing definite things in the lives of people birthing very definite things things you can see things you can relate with you will know and you can know that this one was by the hand of god second peter chapter one we start from verse two we're reading the first three verses after from verse two just help those under the anointing grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ the next verse says according as his divine power hath given us all things ah, fire is burning in this house I tell you fire is burning in this house 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 all that i'm seeing in the spirit is fire just fire fire don't mind my madness just allow me to do this thing i'm just seeing fire that's what i'm seeing fire You know when these things start no matter how you try to concentrate sometimes you just continue to see um, there's a young man here you are in ministry the Lord is telling me that you are entering the realm of the miraculous right now the dimension of strange miracles God has been dealing with you for months you have been having encounters it's even part of the reasons why you came here and God is saying you are stepping into a strange dimension of miracles. Kabaruzi Kataria. Wherever they are in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the grace and the unction that brings men into dimensions of the miraculous. You will know you have come to receive something solid. You will go back to your ministry. And in the name of Jesus, you will see the hand of God in unusual ways. Let the sick be healed under your hand. Let lives, let testimonies, let testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. Jakata barakata. It's like a well of fire from within your spirit. 
opening up a well of fire from within your spirit i shift you to a level of miracles a level of signs and wonders hallelujah you know sometimes god just interrupts the service to minister to his people and it's important to be sensitive because sometimes this five ten minutes of ministration i know that next week is a miracle service but sometimes you always will not have to wait for the miracle service there are people whose situations are a matter of life and death so it's, it's God bringing people into that realm. It's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, entirely by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So he introduces levels, realities into your life. These are the dimensions that no man can gainsay nor resist. Please sit down. Let's see if we can make progress. We have a lot to do. Our retreat starts tomorrow and Sunday. Maybe this will be the last one and then we'll trust God for grace. This lady, Kende, the Lord is bringing I'm seeing a fire that is coming upon her and the Lord is saying he's burning everything that has been deposited into her body this is sickness sickness but in the name of Jesus I command that spirit to give way right now anyone sick here if there is anything sickness I sense a healing anointing right now sickness be healed be healed now be healed please help them be healed anything that has entered your body every deposit to manifest as sickness be healed i bring you the life and the power of jesus be healed it goes once and for all uncontrolled flow of blood goes now uncontrolled flow of blood it goes now once and for all it leaves your life forever in the name of jesus christ the Lord is healing a breast lump. I decree and declare that lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. That lump dies now. The Lord is breaking a circle of joblessness in a family. All of you in that family, there's not one person that has a job. But I'm seeing like a sword coming right now. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that family is. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, your season for testimony, your season for testimony, I break that circle right now. In the name of Jesus, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. I release that family. Enter your realm of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Let's continue. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 now. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises what did he give us exceeding great and precious promises so how did he make us partake us through the promises he left promises that when we access and walk in that reality we will be partakers of that divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss bless your word tonight 
and in the name of Jesus we pray that you will increase us amen and amen last week I started teaching on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth I'll be teaching along that lines not exactly the same thing but then I want us to listen very carefully because for many people the subject of the blessings of God divine supplies wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people those who do not love God and those who don't want to grow spiritually but that is not true I took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men remember my teaching yes and that there will always be a demand by satan to give your soul in exchange for material things so it's not just that your soul listen carefully it's not just that your soul is given to the devil but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies and i gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together when your pocket begins to rise he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down are we together and that has been the system so people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money but in the name of jesus there is a generation of men and women rising by the spirit of god who will prosper even as their souls prosper and so i told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of tyre satan himself sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth and we're going to look at the second aspect today and I'm just going to talk to you two words basically that we'll be teaching um, along those lines and then God will grant us grace Genesis chapter 1 please Genesis chapter 1 when God made man he gave a command and the first word that man heard from God according to verse 28 and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful everybody say it after me be fruitful number two multiply number three replenish the earth number four subdue it that these four dimensions is what makes for dominion that for the saints to at any point command dominion all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences you must have the ability to be fruitful you must have the ability to multiply you must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue i'm not talking about all of those dimensions i just want to connect something i did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful please you need to get it it's very very important because i want to start building from there god is a god of increase god is a god that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful and um when the Lord mandated man to be fruitful. Please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, the womb, or what you call fruitfulness, children, the womb. 
when God told man be fruitful he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery and by so doing multiply the earth number two the mind be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful number three your hands be fruitful your hands must also be fruitful number four be fruitful your mouth your lips must also be fruitful just follow me carefully and then lastly your spirit so when god spoke to man and said be fruitful he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman he was speaking to all of these dimensions of man that the womb be fruitful the mind be fruitful the hands be fruitful the mouth be fruitful the spirit be fruitful are we together the fruit of the womb is the child the fruit of the mind is ideas and creativity please write when the womb gives birth you call the child or you call the fruit a child when the mind or your thoughts give birth you call the fruit ideas when the hands give birth you call the child work or accomplishments when the mouth gives birth you call it words when the spirit gives birth you call it character and so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer if you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agree that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together <clears throat> we rounded up in the last meeting with the daniel where daniel and the three hebrew boys came and said oh king we will not bow we know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol but we have made up our minds that our god is able to deliver us are we together and so it is possible that we conquer these spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints and i want to just guide you very briefly tonight i'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity the power of productivity this is a very scarce teaching in the body of christ and even in africa the power of productivity submitting to the government of christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of christ to the saints there is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is the name of that weapon is productivity say productivity please write this down there is a difference between value and productivity there is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity value talks of your inherent abilities value talks of your potentials value talks of your transactable skills that means that 
everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value but productivity is more than value are we together now just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded the world is full of many valuable people but in the face of economic hardship even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need are we together now it is important to be aware of value but just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints please write this down productivity is the quality or the ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful i'll take it again productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful never forget this this definition that productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful look up please everyone while value talks of your inherent abilities productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful it is not valuable people who are rewarded it is productive people are we together please you may write this down financial resources will always follow productivity not necessarily value financial resources will always move the direction of productivity productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance the ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity So God has a system for our prosperity. He's a God of increase. In spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains, Satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack, into poverty, and by so doing, distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom. And I'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory economic victory is productivity any man any woman any church any organization that is not productive will be poor it's a law please listen carefully any man any woman any church any business any organization that fails to be productive there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality before I discuss a few things and a few ways that God can help us to be productive let me destroy what I call the consumer mentality Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is sin for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies and you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation. It is sin. Everything God gives men 
he expects that they increase in the parable of the talent matthew chapter 25 the bible talks about three men who were given talents one five talent listen carefully the other two talents and then the last a talent and the bible says the one with the five went and made five more increased the other one with two went and made two more but the one with one talent returned back and said you are a hard man you reap where you didn't sow and Jesus called him a name. He didn't call him lazy man. He said, you are a wicked and unprofitable. That's the word, unprofitable. There is no gain trusting you. Wicked and unprofitable servant. Africa has been plagued and sadly, respectfully so, but sadly, our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality are we together now so the the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average african and worst of it all to an average believer the subject of productivity is not taught believers we we have been trained to ignore productivity let me tell you i think the worst scam is to expect life to give to you something the bible says give and it will be given to you that's the law it didn't say what you give is what must be given but until you give nothing should be given back to you so if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you it's amazing my brothers and my sisters how many of us many of us even seated here just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed are you getting what I'm saying now productivity so the average person thinks consumption give me let me eat it has finished Give me another one. Let me eat. It has finished. Daddy, give me this. It has finished. Productivity. We lack this grossly in Africa. Are we together now? Yeah. So people collect their salaries. And when they collect their salaries, the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months, they are back because there was no productivity. There was money, but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be finance, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality. Great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence, you become a multiplier factor. Are we together? So your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you, something happens in that family and begins to multiply. 
the greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture amazing how you can take a seed look up everybody you plant that seed are we together now and then you watch it that orange seed just give it a little time it grows the orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough are you seeing that now yes in spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds it has the stamina and a few months after maturity you begin to see oranges everywhere watch this you will pluck the oranges and after a while it will start again and you will pluck some more and there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people the trees were there before they were born yet they will still eat of it that's productivity are we together now no man who is productive becomes poor no matter what babylon wants to do or not no matter what devil no matter what charm what cause productivity is not an idea for success it's a weapon productivity is a weapon a man of god who is productive will never have empty pews a church a ministry that is productive will never go down a business that is productive will never see shame the key is productivity the key is not wishing the key is not sentiments the key is productivity the ability to convert anything small to become big productivity the ability to introduce a multiplier factor i am productive who do i use come I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness. That he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come will be ready for empty pews the days of solidarity based on tribe based on all this are over the determining factor for impact is productivity we come from the same village will soon be a joke we have the same auntie you are my elder brother i'm your younger brother no people are desperate he said that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills and the people will say let us flow although upwards but let us flow to that mountain are we together thank you what does productivity involve let's discuss this quickly number one the first key to productivity is healthy exposure write it down the first key to productivity is exposure please whether you are standing outside whether what if you can listen listen if you can write write what's the first key it's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life to god whatever it is i was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman one testimony you were all laughing around when the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence you you, you can see the don't feel bad my friend but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access you can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual but he said i want to start from that kindergarten Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. Productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. 
listen to me exposure is not a gift of the spirit in fact exposure is not even a gift of life at all exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded listen carefully you will never rise beyond your mindset i hope you know that zaria hear me hear me hear me this is one of the secrets of our limitation we are limited we are not bad we are just limited that all your life you have known life to be a particular way and so you do not know there is more to life are you getting what i'm saying now most people their exposure is negative party and all of that that's not, that's why i said healthy exposure that means there's an unhealthy one listen to me if god wants to lift you and cause you to be productive the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding he will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted listen to me that's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for god is breaking that cycle of limitation there is no basis for receiving when you can there are many people who cannot god cannot even tell them certain things it's not yet a concept that can be received they don't have a system built within them to receive it please listen very carefully exposure I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. <laughs> because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle beltan the average northerner has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure, exposure, exposure. The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it he would translate you to the realm of the spirit and say still see in any case i need you to comprehend that's what he did to abraham he kept telling abraham you will be a father of many nations abraham said amen like we're saying and god said i can't work with you you are you are empowering delay in your life and then one time he said abraham come out you have checked around and there is nothing that looks like lift up your eyes see count the stars he had been looking at the stars but he never tried counting them i'm looking for something i can use to 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 parallel what i want to do in your life so count the stars so he will start one two three. oh god one two three four five ah one god is impossible that's it he says so shall your seed be i, I have i've planted something in you that you can now relate with he says and abraham finally believed god and it was credited to him for righteousness many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited we came from a poor background now i'm not insulting you please you are born to look like your parents but you die looking like your decisions listen carefully i understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise but somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit down and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. 
it was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw if Jesus did not see anything it can be a temptation are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight everybody say exposure it is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like say Abuja or Lagos and all of that do you know why because the environment sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity so you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you and then they tell you this is a young man that owns it and subconsciously your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say lord there has to be something about my life but in this environment no matter what level you are you are still a champion you see how bad it is before or after school you are still better than many people before or after being born again you are better than many people you waste your money they say no problem you are better than us there is nothing that challenges you so you need a healthy exposure there are people in their life who never bought cars and the day you say we are trusting God for a car they look at you and say what what kind of nonsense is this must you live with a car no you mustn't but it's better to have a car are we together now yes Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say, my dear, let me tell you what this is. Let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say, what is this? This is called this. This is called that. She doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home. And the mother says, sir, it's ready. Help me pour water on the firewood. Let, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rests. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted, but many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit, they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord, there's nothing you can, you just, you just think it says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters and when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something. That's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy a ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people the possibility that you see before you is what you become that's what jacob did to the animals he simulated what he wanted them to become are you getting what i'm saying now Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God. 
and you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience. I thought all wealthy people hate God. I thought all wealthy people are indisciplined crooks. Here I'm seeing a man that loves God. Then you have the opportunity to see his offering. You have the opportunity to see his tithe. You have the opportunity to see his prayer and in it his righteousness endures. He will leave you with a mark. You will go back and say, Mama, I know we are in this hut, but there is a better life. Egypt, I know there's cucumber and there's carrots, but there is Canaan. Mama, there is Canaan. Let's trust God for grace. And in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. May you be the one to lift your family out of this land. Please sit down. Exposure. Exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart. Are we together? You never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand. Because every time they paid your school fees, you were the last. You never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money. It's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive. That there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of God. Not lack. Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what would discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us, our educational background is very poor till today. We are still fighting that warfare. Let me tell you where it started from. It started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to. You went to a school that you sat on stone. Now, I'm not insulting you. Are we together? Yes. A school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know. Because that's what is obtainable. Are we together? How you pass your JSC is now that you know it was mercy and favor. Because you were certainly not ready. Now, let me tell you, if you come from that kind of background, you will be surprised. The first thing you have to manage is complex, not assimilation. The moment you find yourself in the company of other people, their confidence will intimidate you. You will have to fail for a long time before you start building. Your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching. To manage your complex, just a question they ask you. Stand up and you cannot say your name again. You don't fail because you are bad. You fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with. Exposure is powerful. Exposure is powerful. The same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family, or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. 
Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? His whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he termed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the scene. And it was terrible. Especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight to fight between myself and my father everything was aggression you bring cold water for him to wash his hand he won't say you are wrong he will slap you you fall with the whole thing then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before how did you manage that situation now please don't you ever see my father and my father is a born again loving man right now he's a healthy and wonderful man are we together now yes i respect and i honor him with my life and forever so don't don't think that honor your father i'm not just he's, a, he's truly a good man one of the most honest people i've seen in my life but he was a victim i have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist everybody is only an executor of his understanding because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body there's only a dead body are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yeah. And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah, Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known, but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. 
and this is where the internet becomes a blessing you don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your your yourself but your mind can go there. Remember, I've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere, your body must follow. It doesn't matter what the resistance is. Yes, you don't have the privilege to have been born in Lagos. You don't have the privilege to have been born in the US. You don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the Western worlds. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my village. The last time I checked, I didn't exactly see it there. That's not the issue. Your body may not be able to go there. But God has orchestrated such that your mind can go there. Everybody around you was a bad father, a wicked man, a bad mother, a wicked woman. And God can just lead you to one 15-minute video on YouTube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies. Everybody say exposure. There's no excuse in our world today for remaining small even financially there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure are we together number two thank you the second key to productivity please write it down is creativity and innovation creativity and innovation the second key to productivity remember i told you productivity is a weapon you don't just fight by prayer alone you don't just fight by fasting alone your productivity is a weapon as god is exposing you and exposing your mind you are fighting a warfare that you do not know it's a warfare for your destiny while you are exposing yourself you are exposing it for your children for your children's children and then number two creativity write this down what is creativity creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas imaginations and dreams into reality creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas your imaginations and your dreams into reality I saw this definition and it was so instructive. It also involves the act of turning your, um, transforming your ideas, imagination, dreams into reality. Full stop. It also involves perceiving the world in new ways, comma, finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. It involves perceiving the world in new ways, finding hidden patterns, making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Look up, please. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu abohu, confusion and chaos. And the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters because creation, recreation was about to start. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit was as a creative spirit. And listen to me. If you will conquer the king of Tyre, and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of God, then you must be creative. The spirit of invention, the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit. Please hear me. Any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators. There is no reason for competition again. Creation is the key the ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit please give us ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or imagine the word there is imagine it says according to the power that worketh in us 
creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I, I'm not being insultive, but you ask a graduate a simple question. Just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures. Change five to seven. Change this to and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of a magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let, let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, Every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah. Telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new... You go, they apply to a job looking for 80 people. And about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry. But there is a way. There is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The... The employment in any nation is private sector driven. There is no nation that the government handles their employment. No. Government has only limited parastatal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And because they are working on cutting costs, usually they will make sure that as much as possible they cut costs. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven that means the more businesses you have the more entrepreneurs you have then they can be able to absorb people unfortunately technology and information has replaced men there is no reason why i should employ 1000 people when i can employ five people and five computers 
737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people one of their most successful products but with that many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient every businessman does business for profit I hope you know bank is business bank is not government property it's somebody's business look at graduates now all around there is nothing because there is a system and please listen to what I'm saying because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us read ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you and while that is happening satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high it's a double-edged sword so that whatever direction you come from you will be attacked listen the average salary within this system is not more than 20 to 30 thousand listen carefully am i telling the truth there are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is 20 to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know no matter how careful you are in this life, 20 to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and it's more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000 and everybody saying, oh yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry. <laughs> Watch this. Where will you get the resources to marry? I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry? You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing, can, remember you are born again. Remember you are filled with the spirit of God. And Satan says exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithe. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity. Listen to me creativity and innovation there is a spirit in man my brothers and sisters there is a spirit in man there are men and women that must arise let us not pray in tongues for nothing we are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground the world does not understand that language the language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee. 
his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out right now everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots people who don't have any brain is that true the spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer the spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting the spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions on common manifestations of the hand of god listen let me tell you this listen to me let me say this and I, I i don't know if i will sound proud but please forgive me forgive me when i started banking i was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature as god increased me i found out that it's not true that rule was only for some people are you getting the point now there are transactions today that i do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it now listen very carefully i'm not saying this to boast i'm not saying this to brag i'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity there are rules that will be broken for you and your children i told you about bvn i didn't have the time to do bvn I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue I told them I said I don't have this time and they gave me time 8 30 I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me I sat down and did BVN is there anything sir would you are you happy would you like a drink I said ah look at how unfair life can be listen to me this is not some boasting or bragging I want you to be apostolic in your understanding this is not about money at all this is about your soul and the gospel are we together now yes. let us not keep our children in captivity my brothers and my sisters standing between your parents and your children is you we are that bridge you can transfer what you received or you can say Lord let me be the one to suffer it let my child not go through what I've gone through again and God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be this is this is where sincerely speaking i have a little challenge with we men of god we continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them is wickedness is a scam do you know how available people will be when they are financially free financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life most of the distraction is the pursuit for money it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep it's impossible to pay to pray three four five hours every day when your pocket is crying it's not true not in this country we release the sound of the heavens the sound of creation yahweh is here we release the sound of the heavens the sound of creation yahweh is here we release the sound of the heavens the sound of creation yahweh is here we cry holy 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 unto yeshua shekinah is here yahweh yahweh hey, 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 hey. yahweh creativity 
creativity, creativity, that God will anoint people to be creative, do new things or old things in new ways, that you set a pace. My brothers and my sisters, let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria. No, it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller, but there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we used the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen. The instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah won, just like I'm warning. Noah warned, just like I'm warning, and told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it, that the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning, I usually don't come out, and I decided to just come out in the afternoon i didn't know it was this hot when i came out and the way the the sun it was so serious i just stood and i looked i said my god and i said this is my message oh lord this is exactly what is going to happen to people think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long headache pain yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things and do you know the pain when you hold all your children together and said, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Junior says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you will have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child. In the name of Jesus. No. No. I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel at the expense of the truth but this will be a blind foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity listen very carefully god is teaching us something tonight that will save us exposure creativity the mind that thinks the mind that works spirit inspired mind the mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit Bad solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now, 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extra moral lesson. It's a VIP extra moral lesson. And it started like two children three children right in her house and those students were behaving exceptionally well but more than that she was teaching them character character and then she would play koinonia messages too these children were changing in remarkable ways 
and the parents started recommending their circle of influence. That's always what happens when you penetrate one circle. They will call the others like them to you. And like play, like play, this woman would collect 10,000 naira per month. As at the time that I was talking with her, she had like 50 children. Only God knows how much she has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and it's the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind, something on your mind and change your life change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. The person's clothes, they wrote $400. Then his, his tie, they wrote $20. And then his head, they wrote $0. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything. up. It's not only power to shake. No. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your heart on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakatoske Parakata from heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray, please pray. Sabra Nekatalakotosasiata. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you, you will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? kings 
that God will put something on your mind on your mind grace I heard about somebody please sit down we'll soon pray sit down I heard about a gentleman true story and I was sharing it with someone this afternoon he sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain and he kept praying and crying before God and the next thing he saw a mowing machine machine that cuts grasses and he had some little savings and he went and bought it when he bought it he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land and say sir I'm a young man I'm a graduate it's just that I didn't have um, any you know no employment and I just bought a machine I know that there are young boys that cut grasses but my machine I can mow it down and then pack everything and the man looked at him and laughed and said I'm impressed these are the kind of men I want you're welcome come in and he came in and mowed the man's grasses he was so well and he told him that not only the grasses I can also trim the flowers listen the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire he deals in everything that has to do with he bought these machines they mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers flowers they to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one and something comes from heaven and changes your life for as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better my brothers and my sisters let me tell you you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age are we together I know a woman a dear precious woman in Lagos every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry I'm very quick to order her her products health drinks completely organic 100 percent because they need to live long and live healthy you see when you are poor is not a concern because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this but by the time god helps you small you find out that at a level is a serious concern and this this woman started selling health drinks and you know beautifully packaged and only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents let them take it and let them be blessed the goal is not far from you when the spirit of creativity comes on you you will see what others don't see it's true anything can bless it depends on how it is served are we together there's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local, you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it. Even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness rebuke excuses there has to be a way out of it the warfare that is executed through creativity only creative men can survive upon that mountain there is a way out there is a way out there has to be a way out of struggling hallelujah Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity. The third key to productivity. One is exposure. Two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive. The third key is competence. 
the ability to standardize your results hmm. competence the ability to standardize your results maintain quality predictable quality predictable quality anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation i know if you're a lesson teacher i already know what a child will get because you are there if you are a chef i already know the food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow you are not competent competent is a product of mastery the mastery of the laws that govern that operation predictable competence listen to me when your results are not standardized kings will not come to you kings do not come to a fluctuated result stability for kings mean mastery so when you stabilize and standardize your results whether spiritually intellectually or otherwise you call the attention of kings the leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results you cannot keep fluctuating forever as a man of god as a businessman as a career person there must be a level of standardized results everybody say competence be strict on yourself set a high standard on yourself don't celebrate mediocrity just because you do something small challenge yourself think global think global think global you can start small but let your mind be global are we together I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention, then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today, is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's cloth today. You walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually, but insist, insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you. When you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he cursed it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria. Come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same. Because the message is powerful 
and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you and they are noticing the fluctuations around your result. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth and my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man a very very big and wealthy man and then he was encouraged to do a good job and i'm sure he may be listening now and when he sewed the clothes for that man from that time that man started calling him now he asked him i heard recently again to make another set of clothes let me tell you competence is addictive when people meet competent people they don't easily let them go no there are not many competent people in the world you can only complain for a while you will come back be so competent that you become an endangered species i remember years ago a dear woman was getting married in zaria and she went to bring in a uh, what they call these people that makeup artist from Kano and I asked a question I said does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day the wedding day is not the day of trial and error if you are not competent provable competence kings and queens will not call you listen when you become competent you can name your price and the world will still say thank you Is God blessing you? Competence. You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, Oh God, um, now that the job is not coming or what I read. No. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. Listen, Koinonia, I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced. And that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life is changed do to me what you want listen some of us our parents may have failed but turn them into a success by being successful so that they can say my assignment was to give birth to you and since i gave birth to you i may have failed in every other thing but because you arrived successfully your success has turned me back to a success The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names and coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. 
are we together being in zaria is not a cause being in the north is not a cause being a nigerian is not a cause and the secret is not running to canada the secret is not running to europe there are people under bridges in all of these nations it is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that god gives you are we together by the time we are building our international headquarters these are there are people here that will single-handedly by the spirit of god say apostle look we are writing this let this not be an issue not moral support no that people like here who will be so blessed and sign a million bibles and say please take them to the northeast noiseless impact are we together now there are many of our children in this ministry some of them you see them come and many of them is only god that supplies for their daily bread and is only god that takes care of them when will god bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say young man you were about to fall but because i came ah i am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came you know your impact by what people do around your birthdays that you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed people should be excited and know that my god this blessing to my life what an opportunity to celebrate him there are people today you still look at their grave and their grave is a salmon you can stand on their grave and live inspired he came he saw he conquered productivity the ability to trust God for an innovative spirit listen turn your ideas to products and services you are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services served with excellence until they become products and services you are only worthy of commendation not reward I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey, that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house it's not in a competitive manner listen one of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence the moment you are productive and you lead a field you are given grace to mentor to build to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people and this is one of the keys to kingdom advance you never become influential as a mediocre it is when you when you set the standard and you lead the field are we together you must challenge yourself i vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting i said apostle you have not started oh you have not started the trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. 
I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I say I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain, where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage, but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves. That out of Zaria, God will spring forth something that will shift this nation. Men and women who defy unemployment. Men and women who defy mediocrity. And your productivity will open the gates and the king of Tyre will watch you and he will pass and sit on that mountain and call for nations to come and they will come. Listen to me. We are going to have a few minutes to pray. And just where you are, I'd like you to pray. Are we together now? Worship team, just give us, just play something for us. And then you pray. You are going to cry for your destiny. Tonight's prayer, you are not interceding for anybody. You are saying, Lord, there has to be something uncommon in my life. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of having what everybody has. It is the reason for jealousy. It is the reason for envy. Lord, put something upon my life. Something uncommon. Are you ready to pray? Expose my mind. Grant me the grace to be creative. Grant me the grace to be competent.
pray the endless expectation of creation I waited the manifestation of sons no excuse for poverty no excuse for failure no excuse for mediocrity Lord I cancel those excuses tonight I cancel those excuses I cancel those excuses I have a mind that thinks I have a spirit that can think there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty can make men of understanding Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cause the spirit of laziness. Laziness. Physical laziness. Mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I'd like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Those following online, pray. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We are praying. Two more prayer points and we are done. I believe in diversification. But I also believe in mastery. You are going to pray. Lord, what is that one thing? The area you want me to be a master in. Incontestable. Unarguable. Reveal to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, is it agriculture? Lord, is it finance? Is it in my career? Is it in the academia? I cry for the spirit of revelation. Show me, oh God, the one thing that will set me apart and bring honor to your name through my life. Please pray. Concentrate and pray. Concentrate and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up, please. One book that was written by T.D. Jakes, Woman Thou Art Loose. One idea from heaven. He wrote that book and it changed his life and set precedence for a conference that is one of the premier world conferences today for women. One book, Purpose Driven Life, that a man wrote, changed and turned his life around. One idea called Uber in an app that was invented far away from Africa is walking like fire here in Africa. What if God gives you the cure for AIDS? What if, do you know that I found out that there is no sickness on earth now that does not have a medical cure? I mean that has been found. HIV is not incurable. I mean medically. I, I'm not pleased with due respect to the medical council and all the medical people these are my personal opinions i'm not speaking on behalf of the ministry nor am i speaking on behalf of the nation i'm telling you by spiritual revelation and by intelligence that there is a cure for it there is a cure for cancer 
there is a cure for all these things the only problem is that those who have found the cure have not learned the systems and because you belong to a harsh world and a harsh environment that this most of these things were in many respects intentionally manipulated to victimize Africa so an individual that rises like that will be fought over but there are cures not one not two I have spoken personally with people that have these cures let me tell you sincerely. Are you ready to pray? Lord, that one thing that will put upon my life, that will take the sorrow of lack and want forever, that I can leave something for my children's children. Please pray. Let this be the last prayer point and we are done for tonight. Take my eyes to the problem that holds my wealth. Take my eyes. Don't run away from problems. Take my eyes. Show me, oh God, in life and destiny, where is the problem? Show me the Goliath that my throne is connected to. I'm not afraid to face that Goliath. It may take time, but I will prevail. Lift your eyes and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, take my eyes. Take my mind. Take me to the problem, the issue that I can solve that will bring me into my financial Sabbath that will take my family out of a realm of obscurity and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shared with you, listen. I shared with you some time here about a dear man of God who was going to pray for me. I, you know, just went, sowed a seed into his life and then he looked at me and it was time for him to pray for me. And he said, Oh God, create a problem that only him can solve you know I stood there with my heart that is for the body of Christ I said I don't know if I like this kind of prayer I mean I don't like things that try to outshine people I'm not that kind of person and so what kind of prayer is this but the man had prayed his prayer but when I sat down and I thought about it I knew that he was not speaking from a standpoint of jealousy listen to me your similarity Mike Modoc says create your comfort it is your difference and your uniqueness that creates your reward. Nobody will pay you for being like another person. They will only reward you for being unique. There can be 20 of you in a city, but you can stand out. The same way there are millions of men of God across the earth, but there can be a unique imprint of God's grace upon your life. Are we together now? I decree in the name of Jesus Christ the grace that wakes people up in the night and shows them witty inventions may that grace rest upon you this God is a mighty God your trust in him puts pressure on his integrity pressure on his integrity that's what brought some of you here from so far you have put pressure on his integrity 
I assure you, he will not disappoint you. Hallelujah. All through scripture, the Bible is full of God's promises. And then attached to them are conditions that men must satisfy as a proof of their faith in God. God cannot assume you trust him. So he creates a condition so that you're activating that condition is proof of your partnership that I agree with you. It will be costly for me to take this water and then tell Pastor Ejimi, I want to force you to take. No, 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 no. I can't assume he's thirsty. Are we together? So I say, Ejimi, if you are thirsty, I have given you access to this. You're picking the water is proof that one, you are thirsty, but number two, that you believe I'm not a liar. Now, if you want to come and pick this water and the protocol stops you, it, you, have, you have obeyed, you have put pressure on my own integrity and so I come in and I tell him no, I instructed him. He's acting based on his trust in me. He's not acting based on rebellion. The problem is never the devil. The problem is our fear. Alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them number three quickly the third reason why people experience failure defeat perpetually is demonic oppressions demonic oppressions first john chapter 5 verse 19 demonic oppressions we live in a world that is full of demonic activities and the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the reality that there are forces of darkness that attempt to contend with the liberty of the saints. It says, and we know that we are of God. Read on. And how many? Not Nigeria. The whole world does what? Lieth in wickedness. Like you say, my child is lying on a carpet. The whole world lies on a mystery of wickedness. The condition to be a potential victim of this is that you are born of a woman. The moment you arrive here, that's all. Are we together now? You know, several people say, who did I offend that all this trouble is in? All those things are, they are just cultural ways of trying to manage pain. The whole world lieth in wickedness. The moment Jesus was born as a baby, all of a sudden, when a star came at the east, Herod, the spirit of the Antichrist, began to walk in Herod and they wanted to kill Jesus. Even in heaven, there was war. He said, There was war in heaven. A woman, I saw a mystery in heaven. A woman was about to give birth to a child, and a dragon came and stood, waiting to eat the child. And the Bible says, The earth fought for the woman and took the woman to a safe place. Hear me, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It tells you the location. In it takes faith and the operation of God's word for it to be settled in your life. It is settled in heaven, hence the dexterity and the order in heaven. But on earth, there are still forces contending with the purposes of God. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, please give it to us, verse 12. Ephesians 6 and then verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Listen, I want you to listen to my message against spiritual intelligence. That message has bled so many people. I was talking with my mother, Jimmy, today and uh, my mother almost made me cry. And she said she was listening to spiritual intelligence so much and making several decisions in her life based on that. Spiritual intelligence will teach you not to waste your time. Being angry with men, fighting men, because every man, every man is just, is a physical form being manipulated by a reality from the realm of the spirit. You have to know this. It is never about your in-law. It is never about your son. It is never about your daughter. No, no. 
wasting time on men will make you hate people you cannot love there is a revelation that sponsors love so even if people speak against you you know that they are not speaking of their own Peter tried to rebuke Jesus that you will not die on the cross he said Satan get thee behind me and he said Peter Satan desired Peter said which Satan we came here together Satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will look for them too are we together he says but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places Paul himself was not he did not leave the church in limbo as to the reality that at every point in your life there are forces that will attempt to mock God here's a revelation God gave me recently every sickness every oppression is like a letter Satan is writing to God he uses men like the canvas and says I am making a mockery of men to prove that your word is not true are we together now so when I trust God and I still come and I'm sick and the sickness is eating me it's not about you Satan does not even care he is trying to use men the highest of God's creation to make a statement to the heavens that bowing down you did not do I am now using your image to compel creation to bow down to me and so when God finds a witness men and women who represent the systems of God who represent portals that manifest the multifaceted possibilities of God in the earth they now begin to rewrite in the lives of men watch this so this lady come darling this lady has cancer it's eating her up that's a letter from Satan it is never about the cancer Satan does not care he's he's contented with the statement and the reaction of creation to him by reason of this are we together so when she comes for a miracle service like this God begins to rejoice not because he just became powerful finally an intercourse between need and supply listen every time hear me every time God heals a man it was not that night he planned to heal the man he had been navigating the need and the faith of that man to the grace the unction level it takes to produce that miracle and when two of them collide there must be a miracle I've taught you something listen oh let me not go ahead of myself I'm enjoying myself here very seriously listen this lady cancer now I've prayed for her and she's not healed that's a double message you see that that message now her faith begins to fail her because she's saying but but I mean does that mean my situation is different and she goes to God Lord I love you I love you but then she begins to think and somebody comes to say look there's one man somewhere oh, I'm advising you all this your Jesus thing me too I'm a Christian I gave my life to Christ before you were born I'm only telling you this what is there to oh, just go carry one goat I can even give you half of the money you see it is a statement Satan uses men their situations is like the pen he writes a letter to heaven watch the ones you claim you died for barren of your faithfulness yet you study from scripture I have been young and now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken not you see back for bread then Satan comes to write a letter that's why God is searching for men he's not searching for men to give them titles he's finding space in the earth through men so that the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities can be made manifest now if this lady supernaturally gets healed like the gentleman look at the guy that 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 um that came back to life 25 people immediately 25 people because a dead body came back to life you can't deny that are we together that's a statement brothers and sisters tonight my father will write another statement yes he will yes he will see God does not just write anyhow he writes in a way that he must force you to read it 
his miracles are notable ask Moses he made the bush to burn in such a way Moses could not ignore it that's the same way somebody will walk out of this meeting and all of a sudden doors opening 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 hallelujah That's the God we serve. So when miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed, that's the last reason for a miracle. Miracles are a message. It's a reply from God back to men and to the gates of hell. I am still faithful. The lion, the lamb, my benevolence is still in force. I am still good. My mercy endures forever. And he uses men sometimes you see in his wisdom he just allows the devil to exhaust his knowledge then he comes in so cheaply and lifts a man and says satan how about this when you understand this hear me you will passionately pursue the presence and the power of god not for fame you are seeking to give god space there is a statement that god needs to write to principalities and powers they mock god in our life are we together this is what happens because it's difficult brothers and sisters we are humans when your life has a track record of perpetual failure it will test your faith and that's when satan comes and tries to say where is your god you are 39 years as a lady you have loved god all your life no marriage and I'm here believing my life anyhow. I'm still married, but another man still wants to add another marriage to me. Look at two of us. Brothers and sisters, they are not speaking on their own. It's a letter. So it is good to give God thanks in that situation. But it's best to give God thanks in victory. Are we together? Yeah. Thank you. Demonic forces. They exist, they are real, and they have made nonsense. First Thessalonians 2:18. Please let's hurry up. First Thessalonians 2:18. The apostle was speaking, and he opened us up to something very, very profound. I want us to read together. Ready? One to read. Wherefore we would have come to you, even I, your breakthrough. But what happened? help me please once and again your breakthrough would have come to you your prayers answered already but satan hindered us satan can attempt to hinder men from meeting men satan can attempt to hinder things from meeting men are we together now it's part of the reasons why we pray we pray because in the place of prayer we create our own climate and we command the forces of darkness we enforce the victory of Christ and we clear the air for believers to receive the fullness of the blessings of God the last reason very quickly and then we'll pray why do people experience limitations in their lives they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment this is the last reason the last reason i've given you four reasons why people remain in perpetual defeat they trivialize and ignore for many the place of spiritual empowerment ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 We celebrate the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this place. Not just the ministry of the Spirit. As you know, we're on a series, the Holy Spirit. He said, finally, my brethren, haven't told you all these other things. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His. The word might there means His resources. His resources. The power that comes with his resources there are arsenals there are mysteries 
there are supplies of graces and possibilities that make God God and the Bible says we should be strong in that the power our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom are we together now there are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers once and again Psalm 66 verse 3 Psalm 66 verse 3 let's read one to go say unto God how terrible art thou in thy ways help me please through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power to reign in this kingdom it takes power to reign in this wicked world it will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper it takes power it's more it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world are you going to bribe no i will stand in for truth that means there is no promotion for you and you can remain there for decades are you from so 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 state no i'm not no you are not qualified for this position human sentiments it takes power to defy the wickedness of men it takes power hallelujah it takes power it takes power to build a ministry much more than wisdom it takes the ability of god it says rabbi john 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man nicodemus seeing the mighty works of jesus christ they criticized him in the day but he smuggled his way to jesus in the night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him the anointing of the holy spirit is god's authorization upon a man to represent him God's authorization the anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's ability listen the capacity to produce God's result God's dimension of result can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace we trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God and since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry I do not need the anointing no brothers and sisters hear me the anointing the anointing i've said it again i want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students I was teaching them when we we're doing pneumatology I was teaching them about the anointing and I said this is our wicked world people ask you who is your father it's an iron bender who is your mother she sells a car somewhere in the road no you cannot rise we are victims of the wickedness the sentiments the ethno-religious biases of men in a world where people want you to bring something you need the advantage not an advantage brothers and sisters the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody the anointing others may get there because of their connections Others may get there because Uncle So 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 went. And once you are there, they ask you, How did you come? And then you laugh. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. Working in me, it's working in me. That will be your testimony. It's God's ability. It's God's ability. Working in me. The anointing.
anointing will always produce supernatural results you've heard me say it if it is the Lord's doing then it must be marvelous in our eyes if it is a man's doing it is natural and logical but brothers and sisters when your result defies the natural progression there is another agency other than you when your results in any area of life listen they called Jesus they said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub he said if I use Beelzebub the prince of demons by whom do your fathers their fathers were casting out devils they fraternized with the realm of the spirit access powers higher than a human power and were producing results that statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know yes In this day and age, brothers and sisters, the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes. You don't just tell somebody be healed. That's arrogance without the anointing. Now, let me show you something. I've taught you this again and again, but I feel like doing it. Let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me, please. Look at this. Because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing. I want you to learn this, please. By the grace of God and by the privilege of His grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, a Jimmy, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now so when if your desire is to buy a car you need multiples of 1,000 it is good that you have 1,000 but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result this is how the anointing is don't say I'm anointed it must be to the level that is capable I thought this thing is energy physics defines power as work done per unit time that's the definition of the anointing God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results. That's the anointing. Listen, if I try to lift this, it doesn't mean I don't have energy. It means the energy dissipated per unit time is small. So I need another agency to assist me. Is that true, believers? This is how it is so it is not that the name of jesus is there is not working it is not that the anointing is not working the situation that you are confronted with this is why grace and peace is multiplied because there are situations that defy that current level so he says grace and peace be multiplied to you why is it multiplied how god anointed jesus acts 10 30. look at the extent to which he anointed jesus of nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you'll be a blessing if Dan Gote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how, do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him? Because it is within his capacity. Are we together? If Koinonia decides to give everybody here one, one million, we'll have a problem somewhere. Correct? Not because we don't have money. It is the limit of our capacity. So it's not when, when this guy has a problem. It's like a shop. There is a dimension of anointing required to solve it. So when you come to help him, it's not just that you laid hands, he may even fall down. But the money is short. What do you need? More. More. More of the same thing. Not more of a different thing. More of what? The same thing. So Benihin can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair. You see, that's... 
the anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God when you are not heavily anointed you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result but watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony it's called capacity the anointing makes God look limitless in the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces we still remain in the secret place because there is more brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if I ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no people want solutions now a man of God gets up here called Joshua Selman I would be a wicked man if I have not stayed with God sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit that's why we cry for his mercy because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God and we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry that's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith he switches to the covenant that that man has with him and it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men are we together? tonight let me tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys yes yes it doesn't take time it only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it learn this about the anointing the anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this. Because the miracles and all this will not take time. Once your heart is aligned to receive, then you will receive miracles upon miracles. Are we together? This is how he gets glory. When he finds men who are heavily anointed. Please hear me. Never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great i tell you you ask the lord my work with god is as if i don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that i'm working with god and i seek to get i have seen them in dreams and visions and i did not see this current level we are trusting god for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say jesus can i flow no. so you can be in a restaurant you are eating and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing 
you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory please rise up on your feet Oh, oh, oh. 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 I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I'd like you to insist and say, Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back. Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Shala prakato sete katapanda shabrakata bala. Shikiti paratos kapratas kalabasya. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na 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 shela na. Shikata bala kataprakato shikiti. Shibres kete shalabanda katai. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's a realm of your glory. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters. I can hear the angels sing You are holy You are holy You are holy You are holy Ta-da-da 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 One last prayer point father take me to a new dimension there is always more lift your voice and pray take me to a new dimension take me to a new dimension Shalom, 
Bradesca Labrando Shabaria da Balarabo. Are you praying? Take me to a new level. Let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence. Let there be an evidence. Let there be a testimony. Nina kawo yabo Sarki salama Nina kawo yabo never be the same I want to pray for you listen I want you to trust God please hear me especially for the visitors here I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny you have to believe that they will live now are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit. And I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight. Bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now. At the count of three. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. In the name of the Lord God whose I am. Right now, at the count of three, I release that grace. I command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough. I command that you leave right now. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. Go now. Bring them out. Shake it, take a Inside and outside. Jesus. 
Jesus in the name of Jesus I establish victory victory I command it break through every force of darkness defying the word of the Lord I place the word of God upon your life right now Shaparoto Sogete Balakata Hallelujah lift your hands my God I still see these breakthroughs I'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit listen I'm seeing at least 17 people 17 people I'm going to pray and the power of God will come upon you strange doors opening right now in the name of Jesus I declare by the count of three one two three open now open now I command it I declare it now now open doors by the Spirit of God open doors open doors Sator Seketa my God doors opening over lives opening over destinies opening by the Spirit of God by the Spirit of God showing me people here with strange delays you love God but strange delays I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit and this is not from darkness it will come upon you once it comes upon you know that that delay will end right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands as I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus Lord where are they men and women who have been delayed strangely right now right now right now i command that light and power that light and power ending delays now mighty in this place mighty in this place you are mighty in this place Mighty in this place, you are mighty in our mighty in our mighty in our I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed now. Supernatural speed. Run like Elijah. I command it. I decree it. In the name of Jesus. Strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now. Like the dew of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The 
the Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now and I'm seeing keys being given to people keys listen keys it will come on you like fire I see keys these keys are solutions and strategies solutions and strategies solutions and strategies you will help me shout that name Jesus again I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God now Lord I pray that even as you have shown me whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now are you ready at the count of three get ready now my God my God my God one two three take this kids take this kids so break your tape. And the people say, Holy, 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 Holy. Hallelujah. Hmm. I will pray for you, but let me just do what the Lord is asking me to do. I've told you. Many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state. It's a sign and wonder. You see, these things, they are operations of the Spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now. I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on South South, South South, that entire region. Now, now, all those who come from that region, South South, South South, a miracle. In the name of the Lord Jesus, South South, the Spirit of the Lord brings breakthrough to men and women. You can stand it, breakthrough, every hand in delay from the South South. I see the hand of God strong upon men and women, strong upon men and women. Ending captivities by the Spirit of the Living God. Holy, 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 there is somebody in overflow too you are holding a picture you are holding photos please come overflow too by the roadside let the person come let the person come quickly you are holding a picture the lord is showing me someone please let let that person whoever he is or she is please quickly you are holding a picture run come you are wearing like blue uh, is it blue or black now who is that come Don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mike i'm looking at you hold on is this her i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in kano where is she she's at kano where is she that's what i'm saying she's at kano. and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture is she up there up to now she have made that get married uh -uh. And this, this, day, she's sick. this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in kano and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from Niger State. Niger State. Yes, 
thank the Lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming and the Lord has brought you deliverance is this your family yes, sir. this is your family yes, sir. one two three four how many children four children have you stopped giving birth do you think this is all I'm looking in a vision and I'm seeing one more a baby girl after this hold my hand sir but the Lord is going to I'm seeing you have serious problem with finances very serious you are not a lazy man even you you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble but I want to pray for you because the Lord is saying I should release you from this hold my hand sir I bring you life in the name of Jesus Christ you will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of Jesus Christ mama please come I don't know this woman but I'm asked to pray for you I look at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing two hands like this you're a woman of prayer this is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit look at me ma you love God sincerely but many things are going around they are scattered in your life and you have been asking can God come can God step in even when you were there you were praying that prayer I had you praying and the Lord is saying I should tell you he's giving you rest today he's giving you supernatural rest madam please stand up please stand up man please stand up where are you coming from madam it's from Sabongari you are coming hold my hands in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the name of Jesus, I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I end captivity. Don't worry. I mustn't speak to you. As I lay my hands on you, I want to believe there's someone you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now daddy sir can i pray for you sir i'm going to pray for you and the lord is going to give you peace and the lord is going to raise people to help you now sincerely speaking i want to be honest with you it is not within my power to stop you from getting married i we generally can only advise because you see let me teach you something especially as a pastor there are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world and when you are ministering sensitive things like this um, they are listening and every territory has laws are we together now things are a bit flexible in Nigeria but if I were in America and I'm talking to this man like this and saying don't marry another wife the son can go and sue me or the ministry so this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith are we together sir it is not within my power and i have no right to judge you i can only declare the counsel of god and pray for you um this is very important when you are speaking to people although by the spirit it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling God there is one more thing you want to tell me. I'm hearing your prayers. Come. What is it? Give her the mic. Is that true? You are standing there and you are praying and you are saying you wish that I can call you again. There is one more issue. What is the issue? Marriage and my daughter's. Your daughter's marriage. Ah, ma Mama, let's, let's pray. If that is the issue. You are a good woman. I want to pray for your daughters and God said that's not what you need. Hold it. What you need is destiny help us. Mama, as I'm looking at you now, they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired. Give her the mic. Is that true? Yes. Sir. You need somebody to help you. Yes. Sir. Seriously. Yes, sir. If not, the time will come. Even what to eat will become an issue. The Lord said I should tell you forget this issue of marriage. Hmm? The major issue is the ministry of destiny help us Amen. lord send people Amen. you see we must pray that god will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers it's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child as if she never trained anybody that's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late now according to scripture a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children but sadly being 
as the situation is we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones a woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again i pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat that god himself will empower you and establish you and send you help mama don't cry in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit the lord will help you by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus see me after the service madam in jesus name thank you i pray for you sir in the name of jesus may the lord change your life change your situation right now in the name of jesus you are the one with the child please come we're going to pray for the sick now very quickly what's wrong with him he's running temperature this evening just this evening yes sir but he has been having persistent cough cough Coffee. let's pray for him lord jesus i pray for this your dear son by the anointing of the holy spirit i decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now and for you his mother i command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach let it leave you right now in the name of jesus christ i pray please why are they here mama come please stand up the lord is visiting you the lord is saying i should tell you he's taking away reproach and pain amen, amen, from your life amen. this is what he's saying please stand up please stand up man that he's rolling away reproach you see as god speaks to one person he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone it doesn't mean that we have to call you the time will not let that happen are we together now for instance madam are you from kaduna who is from kaduna uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person a woman there is a mama from kaduna that i want to speak to now this is a young lady now I, I, a, a mama like elderly woman there's a woman who came here from kaduna not a young lady please i i want to just speak to that person very quickly mommy look at me you have gone through so much pain the lord is saying i should tell you it's your children that will wipe your tears it's your children that will wipe your tears may the lord raise them and may they wipe your tears i pray for you in jesus name why is she here you are the deeper life um, lady you are you are a member of deeper life are you sure hold my hands lord jesus i pray that you do a miracle in her life right now put your hand on your stomach God is taking something away from your stomach now I curse it something is leaving you now as I hold your hands you are even surprised even you you would not have known that there's something here. I'm seeing like a malignant growth something that will later develop to a fibroid I curse it by the God of heaven right now in the name of Jesus Christ let it be over now in Jesus name come my brother you are James I will pray for all of you but you love Jesus you love Jesus I have to pray for you come what's your name your name is James do you love Jesus I prayed for one boy one miracle service very bad friends and I'm still seeing it again I don't know where that guy is and the Lord is asking that we pray for him again you see all these gentlemen you have to be careful it's important for us to be serious with god so that you don't land yourself in the police station hold my hands i pray for you the lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of jesus christ supernatural restoration sir i pray for you you will not i don't know what is making i'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest and the lord is saying i should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure in Jesus name I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray for all of you come sir let me just make contact with you very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ Hasana Hasana we're going to pray for the sick now we have to be very fast Hasana Hasana I'm seeing someone with the name Hasana is there someone like that please very quickly Hasana whether you are inside outside Hasana from Kogi State. Hasana.
Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hasana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration. The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands on you. In the name of Jesus. May you be a benefactor of the mercy of God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy. Yes, it's alright if your names are Hasana. The mercy of the living God. Your name too? Your name is Hasana. Come, I'm interested in what I'm seeing. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This lady you see. She's smiling. But there is a serious case. There is a very mad wild spirit in the name of Jesus Christ there's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands this lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine now I command that spirit this is koinonia I curse you by the God of heaven be gone now let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life this doesn't mean she's a devil it doesn't mean she's possessed no it's just the advantage that satan takes over the lives of people i command in the name of jesus let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue this thing doesn't show on the face so you just see people smiling but they are victims of a lot of things let me pray for you my dear come hold my hands in the name of jesus christ i bring you life now life come the devil wants to bring pain to your life hold my hands i command it to come to an end now pain repeated cycles of tragedies i curse it by the god of heaven an anointing is coming upon you and the lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now there are three ladies I just had the cry of children and there are three ladies you are standing in for your families now as I'm speaking the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them standing in for their families standing in for their families standing in for their families let the oppression in your family end now this girl's family has gone through all kinds of things. This is koinonia. I bring you the life and power that is in the name of Jesus. Now, this is what we're going to do. Please listen very carefully. Um, you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people. I wish that we had all the time, but we have to work with time. And um, we're going to pray for the sick now. Please listen. Whether you are inside or outside, if you are trusting god listen please whether you are inside or outside aside from these particular cases if you are trusting god for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person whether you are inside or outside please don't come in at random i want you to come in i want to minister to you myself aside from that now we're going to pray for the sick overflow one please all of you should walk to the front of your projector you'll be ministered to overflow two and the ones extension of overflow four please walk to the projector stand outside overflow three walk to your projector stand outside very quickly and those inside here i want you to just walk out to me very quickly we're going to minister to people in that order there are so many people it has pleased the lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles please it, it doesn't matter where you stand if you are outside don't come in just move to your projector outside. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to minister to you now. It will be very fast. Whilst we're doing that, please, your prayer request. 
if you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones those online you're yet to write do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations there are so many people inside and outside we are going to pray for the sick the lord has given us the grace he's given us the capacity there are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases hiv you've heard the testimonies there is nothing that has not been healed in this house sir the lord is going to heal you you will not die that virus will not kill you you hear what i'm saying i don't mean to embarrass you i hope you are not embarrassed because i look at you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing very soon this thing will eat you up i don't have to say more than that but you know what i'm talking about there is no virus there is no situation that has not been healed in this place and you know we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people we'll be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then um have i told you where to go to okay so we'll would go in that order i'm sure that i may just walk it alone here there are a number of people who are not here we give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here the anointing of the spirit will come upon you so strongly that will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now this is uh, don't don't mind me i do all my crazy things um let's just walk by the spirit someone here in front the anointing of the spirit will come on you in such a mighty way the moment that happens then i begin to pray for the sick now thank you jesus for your mighty power that's the person down there so i can pray for you now bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Please help them, whether you are an Osha or not. New levels. There are people God is fishing out here, new dimensions. Shebros kaparu shabradi salatush. Shebros katabrandega dego shalabradi asha. Engreto susabrikatia. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.
spirit of prophecy is upon that man who can stand against the Lord no one no not a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me take off my shoes we're going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and i'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the god of heaven who answers prayers jesus jesus the son of the living god now arise O lord Come to your resting place. Brood upon these requests. Let there be mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles. Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit 
that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony. It's turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, every request here, no matter how impossible, is turned into strange and speedy testimonies. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request unto him that answers prayers the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence we decree and declare in the name of jesus most high the son of the living god every request here i say again is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus turned into a testimony by the power of the holy spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the holy spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting i want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because believers are used to charismatism falling down rolling and so on and so forth we many times downplay the place of prophecy prophecy is very powerful and have taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that god allows by his spirit to bring comfort to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of god makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember i told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer i'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know god and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of god this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it, it's, it's inaccurately used. Hallelujah. Let's correct things now. Let's recreate things now. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Oh, come, oh, come, me, man, and run some captivities. Why, yeah. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and grant some captivity, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us his israel in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now every door that has been closed over anyone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command that door be open now
the Bible says have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day but he said as soon as Zion travails he says she shall give birth to son I decree and declare whatever you have been incubating for a long time revealed to you by the spirit but yet to manifest there is grace for performance and I command that you must have a manifestation now I decree it I declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost manifested blessings manifested miracles hallelujah I decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything labor for everything I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who has despised the grace of God upon your life he said and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren I prophesy to you may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you I decree it I declare it. may an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says Elijah told Ahab saddle your ass and run for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah but the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water there are many of you there are several things that have limited your pace I want to prophesy speed for you there is a grace that makes men to pursue to overtake to recover I speak to you in the name of Jesus as I pray for you the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically please hold them I release that grace that grace for speed receive that grace now speed 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 Shikoto Soto Balata no delay I command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Isaiah 6 he says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles you won't look for them again Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now I command Gentiles to come to your light to come to your business to come to your profession to come to your ministry I make it so by the spirit of the living God hallelujah and David said is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth and when he came he sat down with David and he says you will continue to dine with me here in the name of Jesus where your strength cannot take you Satos where your current level of achievement cannot take you I decree and declare may the hand of God that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and I will restore to you the years 
alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it i want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taking for a prey and none say it restore in the name of jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday i command a restoration now i command a restoration now i command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sittest thou idle he said no man employ us and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of jesus i create a space for you now in the name of the lord jesus i create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of jesus it dies now in the name of jesus i speak to everyone God worried. carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands be it in your finances in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command supernatural results supernatural results supernatural results I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results I change the result now I change the results now I change the results now hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward i don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of jesus hallelujah this is one of my favorite blessings to people the ministry of destiny help us I discovered brothers and sisters hear me that it always flows from God through men everything money can buy relationships can buy it there are needless battles needless battles that relationships can solve the distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season whoever must endorse the testimony of God upon your life as a man of God as a businessman whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east and west wherever your destiny helpers are I command them to come into your life now Hallelujah. Listen. 
I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that God can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month believe me you cannot be established over 50,000 per month you are too generous to even keep that money and whilst you give God will orchestrate men but we have learned that Satan can hinder them and pray specifically for finances I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply there is such a reality like supernatural provision this ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to David in the cave of Adullam entered a covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is in the name that is above all names I declare that between now and the next two weeks of June may they appear in your life may they appear in your life appear in your life hallelujah every dying business here every dying career every dying ministry that is as though you are not called I give life to that which is dying now I give life to that which is dying now hallelujah father it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service June you will return here ten times better literally ten times better hallelujah please lift your hands I want to release something there are people here you love God I gave you an example of this anointing there needs to be an upgrade you see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that the anointing is a very obvious quality of God it's not something you struggle to see there are many of us especially pastors who are trusting God for certain dimensions of grace it can manifest as anything wisdom strategies supernatural grace the grace for performance I want to pray for you activations are very necessary to drive people into great results I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house every dimension from prophetic dimensions there are people receiving it now there are others is being activated others is being multiplied in the name of Jesus I open you up now strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit I pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life and needed for your destiny I stretch my hands and I activate it now receive it right now I activate it now I activate it now I activate it now by the power of the Holy Spirit I release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership 
supernatural dimension of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ but thou shall remember the Lord thy God it is he that giveth thee power brothers and sisters there is such a thing called the power the anointing the unction the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace but I stretch my hands let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah I don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly I say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly it says you shall call on Aaron and his sons he said and you shall take your honor and give him honor is a mantle is transferable let me tell you this thing called honor is not about accomplishment there is a grace that makes people distinguish I pray for you from today that grace for honor I release it upon your life may you be honored at the gates of your destiny may you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward tonight may their prayers be answered hallelujah two more prayer points and we're done i pray for your family we believe in family in this place no matter how lifted you are if your family is not lifted he said as for me and my house we believe in family we pray for our children whether in the womb or born we pray i prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of god's faithfulness tonight in the name of jesus supernatural lifting for every family 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 and finally I pray for you in a way you have never seen whoever looks at your face I compel them to favor you listen the Bible says Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her for as long as you made contact with Esther and you looked at her face you were compelled by an anointing believe me I have seen this thing work in my life I prophesy to you men who have no business blessing you as they look at you I compel it from their spirit may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. 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 We're rounding up, but the Lord is giving me a word here. The Lord is speaking to a family here. And he's saying, I should tell you, it will be like a dream. When in three weeks, it will change your life. It will be like a dream. 21 days in three weeks, he will change your life. Whoever this is for, I release it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is also speaking to one person. 
you are going to start a business next month on the 5th and I'm seeing before 31st it has made you a millionaire in the name of Jesus I'm not motivating you I'm speaking as the spirit is giving me unction you don't believe it you will never see it never ever see it every difficulty you came here with in the name of Jesus you leave it down here and walk back free in the name of Jesus quickly in one minute everyone still standing I want to make two altar calls now very quickly the first please keep standing everybody no moving around inside outside please there are people here men and women who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by his spirit please let's keep standing to honor them and whilst you watch the power of God move the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith the family of the Lord Jesus Christ you are saying man of God if you will pray for me I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call the second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying man of God if you will lead me I will run I will run run to Jesus now these two categories of people I know there are people outside overflow one two three wherever you are please our time is gone I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain I'm going to count five wherever you are leave your seat and run now please clear the way for them one quickly quickly let's honor them as they come quickly run to Jesus now please quickly inside outside young and old quickly quickly I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back run to Jesus no turning please keep coming don't sit back there now look at me brothers and sisters I appreciate you for this great decision you have made the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away when you come to him he has the power to make you you have no ability to change yourself but you have the willingness to hand over your life I want to pray for you listen I don't want you to just recite this as a poem I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart standing before Jesus the firstborn among we the begotten and his holy church I want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me tonight I willingly receive your life into my spirit I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead I declare right now that eternal life is mine I receive it into my spirit I'm free from the power of sin the flesh and Satan from today I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you spirit of the living God you represent the presence of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying in a very supernatural way spirit of the living God by the power of the Holy Spirit let these ones never be the same again 
in the name of Jesus Christ may they never be the same again I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that their lives will be objects of praise in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare a new life for you I break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of God's life in you I release you to be victorious I make you victorious by the power that is in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord thank you for this great decision now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um, lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you